This podcast is on independent and dependent events. We'll start with some card problems. So we'll take a look at what a, a standard deck of cards uh, looks like. Um, what do you notice? Write down at least three observations. Well, if you notice, there are 52 cards total. There are four of each suit. So there's, um, sorry, not four of each suit. There are four suits. And what are suits? Carrie Hermanson, please come to the costly office. The suits are clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds, so four suits. There are 13 cards in each suit, so here's 13 cards in each suit. Um, if you notice, there are four of each type of card. So the type of card, you have aces, twos, threes, and so on, so four of each type of card. Uh, there's certain cards called face cards, jacks, kings, and queens, and there are 12 face cards, um, and so on. So let's take a look at uh, cards, using cards for different situations, which we'll call independent or dependent events. So for example, one Lola's going to draw two cards. What's the probability she draws exactly two hearts if she puts them back on the deck before the next draw? Make a tree diagram. All right, so this will be our first draw right here. Two things can happen. She can get a heart. We'll say a heart is red. Then she could get not a heart, which is black. It can happen again. So we'll say this is our second draw. She can get a heart. And she can get not a heart. Let's go that way. All right, so I'm just going to write down what these stand for. So the red, red is heart, heart. She can get heart and not a heart. She can get not a heart and a heart. And she can get two heart, uh, that are not hearts. And let's think about probability. So the probability that she gets a heart is if we take a look at the hearts, there's 13 out of 52 cards are hearts, so this would be 13 out of 52. That's also the same as 1 fourth, so 13 out of 52. And we learned that we can uh, multiply the fundamental um, counting principles, that we can multiply the probabilities. So along the branches, we multiply these together. So get, to get a heart and a heart, it would be 13 out of 52 times 13 out of 52. Again, that's the same as one-fourth if we reduce the fraction times one-fourth and so we have a one in 16 chance of getting two hearts if we change that to a decimal it's 0 0.0625 if we change that to a percent it's 6.25 percent so if you draw a heart or draw a card and put it back draw another card the probability that's two hearts is 6.25 percent what is the probability she draws exactly two hearts so if she does not put them back in the deck before the next draw? All right, so instead of drawing the tree diagram, I like to do it this way. So we have two draws. And so the probability she draws the first heart, again, there's 13 out of 52 that are hearts. But let's say that she doesn't put the card back in. So she did draw a heart. She doesn't put it back in. So there are now 12 hearts left out of 51 cards total. And if you multiply that together as a decimal, that's 0 .00588. And so if I change that to a percent, it's, um, oh, it's not 0, 0.00, I'm sorry. It's 0 0.0588, uh, which translates to 5.88%. So a little bit smaller chance if you take a look at it if you don't put the card back in the deck. Again, there's only 12 out of 51 cards for the next draw, so your percentage drops a little bit for drawing a heart on the second draw. All right, let's take a look at the two examples. Which of the following are dependent events? <coughs> Excuse me. So dependent means one <coughs> result depends on the other. So that would be example two. So the probability um, of drawing exactly two hearts if she does not put it in the deck uh, is dependent because the second probability changes depending on the outcome of the first change. So it depends on what happens first. If you draw a heart the first time, there's only 12 left, and then there's only 51 cards left. Um, instead of, if you look at the first situation, for each situation, since you put the card back in, it doesn't matter what happened before. So dependence uh, arises when a result depends on what happened before. So you try. Uh, you randomly select two cards from a standard 52 card deck. What is the probability that the first card is not a face card and the second card is a face card if you replace the first card? So replace means this is independent events. Again, we're going to multiply them. So first, uh, the card is not a face card. Okay, so not a face card. There are 12 face cards. So if we take 52, 
minus 12, we have 40 cards that are not face cards. So 40 out of 52 are not face cards. Then you put it back in the deck. The second card is a face card, so you have 12 out of 52. We'll multiply those together. Please be sure to check your email this morning. Uh, I'm short stuff today, and I'm looking for people to take a few classes yet. Um, please give me a call if you can at 6106. So if we take a look at that, 40 out of 52 are not face cards. You put it back in the deck, so there are still 52 deck, uh, cards in the deck, and then 12 out of 52 are face cards. So multiply them together, and we get about 17.75% chance of that situation happening. All right, the next one, what's the probability that the same thing happens, but you do not replace the first card? So if you do not replace the first card, it's a dependent event. Again, we start out the same. 40 out of 52 are not face cards. But now you take out a card, so there's only 51 cards left. And how many, uh, uh, the second is a face card, so if you draw a non-face card, there's still 12 that are face cards in the deck. Again, you multiply, um, and you get a decimal. I'm going to change my to a percent right away, so it's about 18.1%. .1%. All right, so you have a little bit better probability of that happening if you take out that first card because you have a little bit better chance of getting that face card on the second draw. All right, so we talk about independent dependent events. One event depends on the other versus independent where you put it back in the deck and it, the outcome doesn't depend on the first one. So in class, we're going to do a card sort activity. What's the difference between dependent and independent events? And then we'll try the assignment, uh, which deals with cards and then also independent dependent events.